T minus four hours until debate number two between Trump and Clinton. And if you thought the last one was a doozy, tonight could blow that one out of the water. Both nominees under pressure to suppress the fallout over leaked tapes and transcripts less than a month before election day. We'll get to Clinton's new scandal in a moment. But we begin with the firestorm over Trump's vile remarks caught on a hot mic in 2005. Some in his own party have had enough. They're calling for him to step aside. But Trump says he's not going anywhere. What do you want to say to your supporters? Are you staying in the race? Are you staying in, Mr. Trump? Mr. Trump? Are you staying in the race? 100%. Three of his top surrogates, Conway, Christie, and Priebus, were all supposed to appear on the Sunday morning talk shows today, but they were replaced at the last minute by Rudy Giuliani instead. Here's how Rudy attempted to mop up the mess. I'm not here to defend his comments. I, he, if he were here, he wouldn't be defending his comments. His comments were wrong. Uh, they were very wrong and reprehensible. And he has said that. And he's apologized. What you're looking at is a man who's gone through 14 months of running for president, understands the weight on his shoulder of all of these people who voted for him, who believe in him, who believe he's really uh, uh, has a movement to try to change this country. I think the point that we'd make is he has apologized for this. And we believe if you get to the issues, he's the candidate that is much better suited to run the country than Hillary Clinton. Eric, let's talk strategy. Let's talk strategy for Trump. Earlier today, he was tweeting out about Juanita Broderick and her claim to have been raped by Bill Clinton. When it comes to the debate, should he go there? Um, I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Personally, I, I, can I just make a couple of statements about, about what, what's going on? I've been pretty much out there, you know, in favor of or backing Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump was wrong. And um, when I heard the comments, I thought of my wife, Adrian, and, who I respect immensely. And I was saddened by the comments. I was bothered by the comments. Now, we've also raised our son, Eric Chase, to never speak of women this way ever, no matter what the context was. So I hope Donald Trump tonight starts out by apologizing, a sincere, from the heart apology. Work on it, deliver it, mean it, because I think that will, do a long, will go a long way. That's not the Donald Trump that what we heard on Friday, that this tape, isn't the Donald Trump that Adrian and I know. It's not the Donald Trump that has won the hearts and minds of more GOP primary voters in the history of primary voting. Um, I still plan. My wife still plans on it. My, my niece, her daughters, my son, we all still plan on voting for Donald Trump if we hear that apology because it's not about Donald Trump now. Now it's about not having, having Hillary Clinton as a president. It's about the good of the country and the good of the family. Now, my point is this, a long-winded point nonetheless, is that he needs, to, he needs to start out in the right place. Get that out of the way and have it believable. And then I think you go and continue to stick to the issues. Forget the Bill Clinton stuff. Forget the, uh, the, the, the Broderick stuff, Jennifer Flowers. Save that for later if you ever even bring it out or not. But tonight is about Donald Trump being contrite and then stay, staying with the issues. Dana, uh, but the fact is that, you know, Steve Bannon, who used to work for Breitbart, now works for Trump. And Breitbart brought together Paula Jones, Broderick, and Kathleen Willey in Washington. And they put out a piece saying these women are afraid of Hillary Clinton. So, again, I ask, is that going to be Trump's strategy? And would you advise him to stick with it? I think what Eric laid out is a great strategy. But what you hear from, uh, if, if the rumors are true, that are coming out of Trump Tower, that that is not the posture that they're planning to take, including uh, what the recommendation was from one of his biggest funders, which is the Mercer family, who said they don't care about these comments. They want him to attack her. And that, I think, is what Hillary Clinton's team is anticipating, based on some conversations I've had. They believe that um, because uh, Donald Trump feels that he was too nice to Hillary Clinton in the first debate and that he held back and didn't bring up Bill's uh, infidelities that we all know about, but that he um, maybe feels that it's time to do that. Perhaps somebody on his team has said maybe that's actually not the best tactic. I think Rudy Giuliani was doing some of the best spin that he could, and it seemed that seemed genuine. Um, I do think that if he can apologize, as Eric was saying, and it does seem heartfelt, and the thing that he has to try to do immediately is try to have some sort of affirmative reason for his candidacy. And I would pick one thing. I'd say, I am the person who can bring change to Washington, D.C., um, to get our country out of the economic rut that it's in so that all Americans can be more prosperous and safer. If he can try to do that and get the town hall back on track, he'll 
maybe be okay to break even. Huh. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to hear what Trump says, and it's also going to be interesting to hear what Hillary has to say about the controversy tonight. Here's some reaction from her top team members on the Sunday morning shows. It's disgusting, and I think uh, people uh, saw uh, in real life what we've been saying uh, for a long time, what Hillary said uh, as far back as June, is that he's unfit to be president of the United States. I don't exactly know what she's going to say about it during the debate. I imagine some of the undecided voters who are part of this town hall forum will have questions about it, and I really think it's for, for Donald Trump to try to answer it and take responsibility. If you take that tape as Donald is accurately describing his actions, then yeah, it, it is a pattern of assaultive behavior, and it's much more than words. Greg, Hillary gets the first question tonight. What should she say? I don't know. First, uh, to comment on, on what you just ran, I don't think what they say actually matters right now because it's so polari polarized that the people that are behind Trump are behind him for better or for worse. Mm -hmm. I don't, I, I remember when he said I could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and still, these people would still stick by me. That's kind of true. And the people that hate him still hate him. The pe it's the people in the middle that don't care about that. They, they're just going to make their mind up as this stuff builds. And that's for my next point. This is not over by any stretch. More shoes will drop. I mean, Trump is basically a centipede in a Nike factory. There are going to be shoes dropping. There are going to be other, other, uh, sound on tape that comes out from either The Apprentice or somewhere else. There's now a report from The Washington Post that after he tried to pick up on the married woman, Nancy O'Dell, he tried to get her fired when she rebuffed him. That was reported this morning in The Washington Post. So um, I think it's just going to get rougher and, and rougher, and it's going to be testing the loyalty uh, uh, or the fealty, rather, of, of his closest supporters. Uh, because at some point you have to ask yourself, is your loyalty being taken advantage of? Uh, you have to, uh, somebody has to earn your loyalty. They don't take advantage of it. And I think right now people are beginning to realize that this was fealty, it wasn't loyalty. Kimberly, uh, today Trump did tweet out that there are some self righteous hypocrites on the right who are abandoning Republicans who are moving away from him. What do you think about that, and how is that going to play in the Republican ranks? Well, I think he would like to see more of a band of brothers approach that no matter what he might say that would be offensive, that they would be about party unity to move the country forward and to think about, you know, Supreme Court picks. I think what he has to do is what Dana and um, Bowling touched on, which is make a sincere, heartfelt apology, look right into the camera and talk to the women out there, the mothers, the sisters, the daughters, the aunts, the nieces and say that he is truly and deeply sorry for those comments that they were inappropriate that there is no excuse for it and then talk about how he wants to earn and be worthy of their trust that this isn't about him or his shortcomings as a human being or as a man but about the love he has for this country and about the love and support that he has felt uh, throughout the country for people who want to change in Washington DC and want to see improvements in the economy want to see someone strong with national security and foreign policy want to see someone that is going to repeal and replace Obama care, want to see someone that's not going to lie to the American people as you see coffins draped over the four bodies of the fallen in Benghazi, someone who doesn't play loose with the law like in the email scandals and lying one thing after the next. He's got to focus on that, reasons to choose him as an agent of change for the party to move the country forward. Geraldo, you know, lots of talk today about this being a tipping point, but the question is why? Because Trump has said outrageous things before, he's defamed people before, uh, but it seems like the Republican Party, the establishment, so many of them now saying, this was it. I can't, you know, this is a nail in the coffin. I got to move on. Why this, Geraldo? A couple of quick points. One, Greg is absolutely right. I've interviewed uh, Trump many times, been with him many times. There's tape. Uh, that I have, Craig, I, my brother and I have just been starting to go through the tapes now, and there are some statements that in the context of the, uh, of the current climate would be, I think, uh, uh, would be embarrassing. Uh, now, one thing that has to be pointed out is the day after the first debate, Donald Trump's candidacy itself was on life support. Uh, this uh, was an existential moment. Uh, he, was, uh, he was already looking up from a deficit. He was at least a four-to-one shot. Uh, following uh, the release of that tape on Friday, uh, I, I think that uh, you, you, you're almost flatlining. He needs a miracle tonight. He is so far behind. 
uh, that I think, of course, he has to start with the apology first to his wife, uh, to his, uh, his daughters, uh, to the wives and daughters of America and all the rest of it. And then he's got to do what Kimberly said. He's got to hit that laundry list and hope that some of it sticks. And then as she attacks him as being a uh, disgusting low life or, you know, whatever she says, he's going to have to then get as, as gutterish as you possibly can. He's going to be hitting low blows. Juanita Broderick from 1978. Uh, you know, is Hillary going to have to say, wait, uh, uh, she waited 20 years to tell uh, the authorities that she had been raped and she uh, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, reneging on a, on a signed affidavit in which she said the event never happened and all the rest of it. Is that, is that what we're going to see tonight? Maybe, because I don't know how else he fights his way out of this hole.